Mr. District Attorney, starring David Bryan. Mr. District Attorney, champion of the people, defender of truth, guardian of our fundamental right to life, liberty, and the pursuit of happiness. And it shall be my duty as district attorney not only to prosecute to the limit of the law all persons accused of crimes perpetrated within this county, but to defend with equal vigor the rights and privileges of all its citizens. This is David Bryan. In a moment, we'll bring you another case from the files of Mr. District Attorney. But first, a word from our sponsor. And now, here is our star, David Bryan, as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A district attorney knows that crime does not always end when the criminal is put behind bars. Some men reform, but others begin immediately to plot their next crime. This case started in the state penitentiary just after the weekly visiting hour. told you to get for me? Yeah. Yeah, she brought it, Johnny. Uh, here. Vitamin tablets and the razor blades. You know, we're not supposed to have razor blades. Yeah. If they find them on me, they might put me in jail. What are you so jumpy about with your lousy year? Another five months and you'll be out. I'm doing life and my nerves are still better than yours. Look, Johnny. With good behavior credits, I can get out in three months. I don't want to get in no trouble. Lay off, will you? Are you telling me what I should do, you cheap place to I'm going to let you and your wife do me another favor. A big favor. Look, i got to be careful what I ask her. I can't upset her now. You know that. Oh, that's right. A baby is too soon, ain't it, Papa? Wouldn't want the kid to start out without an old man, would you? What are you talking like that for, Johnny? I wanted to see if your wife could get those razor blades in. She did. Next time, she can bring in what I really want. What? A gun. No. Uh, Johnny, she can't. You think I'm going to end my life in here? Then think again. If I die in here, you die in here, too. I could take one of these razor blades to your throat right now. No. No, Johnny. I... Keep your voice down. Uh, uh, all right, Johnny. All right. I'll do it. I'll tell her to get it for you. Don't kid me. I can hear the wheels turning in that square head of yours. Next time the screw takes you out of here, you'll spill your gut. I won't, Johnny, I swear. I know you won't, and I'll tell you why. Because if you rat on me, somebody will slip a shiv into you in jail or out. Remember that. Remember it if you ever want to see the kid. You you don't realize what you're asking me to do. I ain't asking. I'm telling and if you decide to get brave with your own neck, remember, you can have your wife taken care of, too. You, you wouldn't do that. Wouldn't I? Try me and see. There's the squirrel making his count now. Stop him when he comes past. Tell him he'll get you out of here and take you to the warden. You can spill your guts and they'll put you in a nice, safe cell away from me. Then you can wait for that shiv. You'll never know when or where from. All right, here he comes. Here's your big chance. That's a bright boy, Abbott. Now you're using your head. Cell, 
Chief. Oh, well, it's easy to see, Harrington. The tongue of the lock has been cut by a hacksaw blade. Yeah. They must have waited in the passage until the jailer turned the corner here, then shot him through the stomach and took the keys. Any idea where they got the gun? I guess Abbott's wife must have brought it in during a visit. Well, how did she get a gun through the visiting screen? They didn't use the regular visiting room. Warden let them meet in the privilege room. Why? Well, because Abbott was a first offender with only a few months to go. And his wife was expecting a baby. I see. You put out a pickup for him? Mm Mm-hmm. We've already got it. Where? Guard's office at the end of the tier. You want to see it? Yes. Abbott chewed off a big piece when they gunned the jailer. From a larceny rap to jailbreak and murder. I don't know, Harrington. A lifer like Johnny Curtin had a reason for crashing out. The first time I liked Abbott, there was only a few months to go. He doesn't figure to make a break. Just the same, Abbott's gone too. Well, we may find out why when we see his wife. Sometimes a man goes places he doesn't want to go. With a gun on his back. She's in here. Abbott? Yes. Do you, you want to help your husband? Yes. Then the best way is to help us. We can't get away, and the quicker we get to him, the better it will be for all concerned. Did you supply him with a gun? It wasn't for him. It was for that other man they put him in the cell with. Johnny Curtin. Why did my husband go with him? <laughs> I'm afraid this isn't going to be any comfort to you, Mrs. Abbott. But I don't think your husband went willingly. I'm afraid he went at the point of that gun you brought in. I'm beginning to agree with that idea, Chief. You brought other things for Johnny Curtin. What sort of things? Vitamin pills, mostly. Every week. Vitamin pills? Curtin was some kind of a health bug, Chief. He was always after the prison doctor for vitamin shots. He even wrote a letter to the governor demanding the state keep him supplied. I see. Excuse us for a moment, Mrs. Abbott. I'd like to have a word with you outside, Harrington. You assign anybody to watch your home in case Abbott and Curtin show up there? Uh, Yeah. Moran and Phelps have it covered. Good. When we get to our car, we can put out a radio call to all units. I want a careful check on every robbery report involving a food store and an itemized account of everything taken. Why an itemized account? They'll probably take anything they can lay their hands on. Maybe, but uh, Johnny Curtin may make a special effort to get his hands on some vitamin pills. Hey, that's right. Uh, what about Mrs. Abbott? Just leave her here? Uh, for now. There's nothing else we can do. Now, let's get to the car. Sky's beginning to turn gray. Yeah, the sun will be coming up in a half hour. Uh, I can't figure why you want to concentrate on these back roads, Chief. We haven't spotted a living soul in an hour. No, not even a state police car. Well, they're concentrating on main highways leading toward the border. Yes, and these farm roads occasionally intersect the main highways, Harrington. Johnny Curtin's no fool. He's not going to strike for a main highway while he's on foot and wearing prison clothes. And another farm gate up ahead. Want to stop? Yes. I'm surprised we haven't got the farmers after us, the way we've been routing them out of bed. Gate's locked. We're parked here. We can slip through the fence and walk up to the house. Seems to be some sort of a light in the barn. Yeah. Probably up already for early morning chores. Ah, uh, here. Here's a loose strand. Go ahead. Slide to him. I got it. Dogs. Oh, they sound like the side of that tree in front of the house. Now, they won't bother us. Good. I don't like being... Down. Now, that sounded like a shotgun. It was. I heard the pellets whiz right over our heads. Come to the loft of the barn. If I can get a beat on... Just lay flat out there and you won't get hurt. You'll be the one to get hurt if you fire once more. You'll Straight air till daylight, or the next one won't be over your head. Police can take care of you as soon as I can get you to them. What kind of a line are you... Just a minute, Hankin. He sounds like a farmer. Cutting loose with a shotgun? Trenton doesn't have a shotgun. He has a revolver. 
Are you the owner of this place? You find out who I am as soon as I can see who you are. I'm the district attorney of this county. My car's down by your gate. I have an assistant with me. We're after two men who escaped from the state penitentiary a few hours ago. Can you see us now? Yeah. Yeah, I see you. Walk toward the barn. I'll come down from the loft. Come on, honey. This lad is going to get a piece of my mind opening up like that with a shotgun. Let's find out why he did it in the first place. Yeah. There he is now, coming out of the barn. I wouldn't have fired if I'd known who you was. You sure didn't waste any time trying to find out, did now you? Now, look, mister, I don't like being shot at any better than you do. And I was shot at not 20 minutes ago by a couple of prowlers. That's what I was expecting, Harrington. Did you see what the men looked like? They're just their shadows. The dogs woke me up. Knew something was wrong as soon as they come out of the house. Jeans and shirts missing from the back clothesline. And I spotted them over toward the hen house and heard a couple of my hens are fluttering. Called to them and... One of them fired a shot at me, so I ducked into the barn. They've got the clothes to take a chance on the highway now. Oh, so, what's the nearest main road? The road your car's on cuts into State 12 about half a mile ahead. We'd better get to that highway fast, Harrington. They've got clothes now. And they'll try for a car. Hitchhike? Yes, a hitchhike with a gun. And heaven help any motorist foolish enough to stop for them. Come on. Here's the highway intersection. Well, nothing in sight. Which way do we try? Well, left of the general direction of the city. Maybe they... What's the matter? What are you looking at? Brush on the far side of the state road there. Thought I saw a little smoke. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I see it too. Oh, I better have a look. Right in between those two trees. Mm-hmm. Yeah, a little campfire dying out. Oh, there. Veggie. Tire tracks. A few sets of footprints, too. Hey, look. Prints go up into the brush and come back again. And what are those spots there? Bloodstains. The driver who stopped for them? We'd better go in there and look around. There he is, Chief. It must have been them, all right. No doubt about that, Harrington. Look at the way he was killed. Johnny Curtin's trademark. Shot through the stomach. This is David Bryan. Before we continue with Mr. District Attorney in the case of the hungry killer... Here's an important message from our sponsor. And now, back to David Bryan, starring as Paul Garrett, Mr. District Attorney. A jail guard and an unsuspecting motorist had been viciously murdered by an escaped convict holding an unwilling cellmate as hostage. I ordered roadblocks thrown up over every possible escape route, and Harrington and I drove back to my office in town to supervise all phases of the manhunt. By the time we got there, Miss Miller and my staff had assembled every bit of available information on the previous life, habits, and association of Johnny Curtin. You're the mate's on Curtin, Mr. Garrett. Oh, thank you, Miss Miller. Why don't we show on known associates? Blank on our records, I'm afraid. He was a sort of lone wolf type chief. There's something in his record from the state of Illinois, though. He did time in Joliet for armed robbery before he moved here. During the time he lived in Illinois, he associated with a woman named Marcella Roberts. Uh, she ran a beauty parlor in Springfield. Mm. Any line on her present whereabouts? No. Telekite from the Springfield police says she sold her shop there three months ago and moved. No forwarding address. Now, I want to find out where she moved. That isn't going to be easy. Yeah, it will be if she went into business again. Well, here's what you do, Miss Miller. Check all cosmetic distributors and supply houses where Marcella Roberts had established credit. If they... I'll take it, Chief. If she's back in business, her new suppliers will be checking the old ones for credit oh, references. Yes, 
Find out who the new suppliers are, and they'll be able to tell us where to locate Marcella Roberts. I'll okay. get right on it. Oh, that was Charlie Benton, Chief. Dispatch with the sheriff's office. Robbery report on a food store. Where? Just outside of Eaton. We going out there? As fast as we can get there. Like I told the fellow from the sheriff's office, I was asleep in this room here, right back of the store, when I heard this noise I told you about. It was still dark just before daybreak. Did you see anybody? No, as a matter of fact, I didn't. I didn't even put on the store lights. Why not? Uh, of course, when I opened the door to the store here, the dang cat popped into my room and started purring and rubbing against my leg, so... I just figured she'd knock something over, so I went back to bed. No, the place had been robbed till I got up at 8 o'clock and found the front door had been pried open. Must have slept through that, though. I sleep sound. I guess I woke up when they knocked that stack of canned goods over. What stack? Uh, Fruit juice, sir. I got it all stacked again. Third time I've been robbed in two years. Why do people want to pick on a small store like this? Think they'd drive into Easton, knock over a supermarket or something. You've been robbed before, huh? Yeah, like I said, three times. Yeah, it might not have been the boys we were after, Chief. No. Better get a fingerprint crew out, though. Make sure. I'll get them on the car radio. You got any idea what they took? Yeah, I don't know. I don't have much of an inventory system. No ways I could tell for sure. I wouldn't even have known they took anything if it hadn't been for the door and the cash register. I can understand them lifting the six bucks from the register, but why'd they have to steal my pills? What pills? Oh, some pills the doctor gave me to take. Kept them right on the shelf under the register. Vitamin pills. Vitamin pills? Why didn't you mention that to the sheriff's deputy? Because I only found out they were missing when I went to take one just before you drove up. Well, why? What's so important about the pills? Just a very slight thing. Something that spells the difference between an ordinary burglar and a vicious murderer. You'll hear from us. Oh, Chief, I was just coming in after you. We're not going to need that fingerprint crew after all, Harrington. The grocer just told me the burglar stole a bottle of vitamin pills. Oh, then we're getting hot. Why? When I came out to the radio, headquarters was trying to reach us. They find the car Curtin and Abbott were using? No, but they got a line on Curtin's girlfriend, Marcella Roberts. She opened a new beauty shop. Where? Just 40 miles east on this highway, Lindbrook. Well, that's where Curtin was headed for then. Come on. You figure the woman is helping him hide out? Curtin didn't head this way without a reason. If she isn't hiding him, she'll know where he's running. I don't like it. Well, be patient, Harrington. Now, how long? First, the beauty parlor is closed. Now we wait all day and she doesn't come home. The sign said the beauty parlor is closed every Monday. Now, that's not uncommon. Well, why isn't she here, then? For all we know, she's taking Kate to some place where we'll never be able to find her. In which case, we have no choice but to wait and hope we can find a way to make her tell us where that place is. Ah, uh, yeah, I guess you're right. But it's getting dark and all we have... Hey... Here comes a car. Stay in the shadows on the side of the porch here. Good evening, Miss Roberts. Who, who are you? Well, my name is Garrett. I'm the district attorney. This is my assistant, Mr. Harrington. We thought you might be able to help us. You know a man named Johnny Curtin? I... Well, I used to know him a long time ago. Then you haven't seen him lately. Well, well, how could I? I heard he was in jail. Your newsboy must have neglected you this morning. He's out. We're looking for him. Well, I haven't seen him. Good. Then you shouldn't mind if we take a look through your apartment. If you've got any objections, miss, the chief can wait here with you while I go for a warrant. I... Well, I only hesitated because the place is a mess inside. Well, don't worry. We won't tell the neighbors. Well, 
Well, here you are. Couldn't hide a mouse in here. Check the closets in the bathroom, Harrington. I'll have a look at the kitchen. Okay, Chief. Chief, that's for sure. No, not now. But there was somebody here. What do you mean by that? I mean, if you were a better housekeeper, you might make a better liar. Take a look in the kitchen, Harrington. I don't see nothing. Try looking at the shelves. They're rather dusty. Except for the clean rings left by a bunch of canned goods. And the cans were removed. Mr. Garrett, I... You're concealing and aiding a murderer. If you know where Johnny Curtin is. Miss Roberts, you can serve a lot of time for that. Now, where is he? Well, I... Well, I drove him and another fellow upstate. You know, where the old state fish hatcheries used to be. Was he going to stay there? Yes. He said he'd stay there for a week. That I should raise some money to get him out of the country and bring it to him next Monday. Drive us to the spot where you left him. And don't bother about raising the money. He isn't going to be needing it. I thought I told you to sit down, Everett. I can't. I'm, I'm cold. Why can't we build a fire? Because I said so, stupid. I wanted anybody to know I was up here. I'd send out invitations. Now sit down. Sit down before you get knocked down. That's better, Abbott. Live a little while you can. You shouldn't mind the cold when you've only got a week. Stop saying that. What do you want me to say? I'm going to let you run to the nice little cops and tell them where I'm going? Oh, no, Abbott. When I get on that ship and leave the country, you're going to be lying nice and quiet someplace. Saying nothing. Why? I never crossed you up. When you wanted things, I got them for you. Because I was right there making sure you did. But once I get my chance to run out for good... What was that? What? I saw a flash of light against the trees. Down that way, toward the road. Maybe, uh... Maybe it's your girl coming back for something. Maybe it's the police. Whatever it is, it stopped down there because the lights went off. Come on. Up on your feet and move. Not that way, down toward the road. But suppose it is the police. Suppose they shoot. That's what I got you for, Abbott. So stay right in front of me all the way. Now move or I'll give it to you right here and now. It must be your girl. She's blowing the horn. Cops wouldn't do that. All right. Just shut up and keep moving. I'm glad it's not the cops, Johnny. Honest, I am. <laughs> uh, yeah, but you're dumber than I thought. Maybe she got her hands on the door I need already. Ever think of that? Because if she did, you just lost a week. You've got to give me a break, Johnny. you got to give me a chance. All right, if she's got the money, I'll give you a chance. <laughs> I'll count up to five while you run before I... All right, Curtin. You can stop right there, both of you. It is the cops. No use looking around, Curtin. You'd never make it back into the trees. Don't shoot, please! I didn't want to be with him! You hear that? He's telling the truth. Little Abbott doesn't want to die. But he's going to die if you make one move to get me. Ain't that right, Abbott? Tug up! Now, Johnny, my arm! You'd better let him go and put up your hands, Curtin. Why don't you shoot? Come on. You'll hit Abbott first, but I don't mind. Would you rather make a deal? We don't make deals. You'll make this one or Abbott's a dead pigeon by the time I count ten. He means it. You'll kill me, and I got a wife and a baby coming. What's your deal? Just turn around and walk away from your car. And keep on walking until I get it started and get out of here with my friend. It's all right, Hankin. We have no choice. That's nice. Just keep moving. All right, Abbott. Now we can go. No. Move, you crazy punk. Why? So you can kill me someplace else? No. You're going to kill me anyhow, so do it now. I ain't going to let you hide behind me anymore. Kill me now and let them kill you. Who are you? Kill me now! Move in, Harrigan. Quickly. Let go of me, you crazy. I'll put a bullet through you, I swear. Go on, go on. Ah. My pain, my pain. Watch the gun, Chief. Drop it. Grab him. All right, Abbott. Stop. 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 My head. He bit right through to the bone. You're all a kill you. I wouldn't kill you then leave me alone, would you? It's all right, Abbott. Calm down. State will take care of him. Now march, both of you, down to the car. 
I never expected this one to turn out this way, Chief. And neither did I, Hankin. But a man can only be driven so far. And Curtin drove Abbott to the breaking point. Sometimes in that small second before dying, a man suddenly stops being a coward. Abbott stopped just in time. This is David Bryan again. I hope you've enjoyed this case from the file of Mr. District Attorney. I'll be back in just a moment after this message from our sponsor. Now, here is the star of Mr. District Attorney, David Bryan, with a word about the program you have just heard. Johnny Curtin, already sentenced to life imprisonment, was tried and convicted on two counts of murder in the first degree. He was sentenced to be executed in the manner prescribed by law. Ralph Abbott and his wife, Frances Abbott, were each sentenced to two years for aiding Curtin. But since they had acted under duress, sentences were suspended. Now, this is David Bryan, and based on the facts of crime from the files of Mr. District Attorney. Mr. District Attorney was originated by Phillips H. Lawrence. <laughs> 